Hi guys, another topic that I am getting a lot of questions about is the 5G cell search. Now uh, if you remember I have already discussed about the 5G network entry for non-standalone. Uh, you can see the link on the top right. But the, the cell search procedure that is something that is uh, related to 5G standalone. So today we are going to talk about how the 5G standalone cell search works and uh, how the, in that case the whole network entry process is. So first of all if you remember um, the first thing that a UE needs to search for is the SSB the synchronization signal block. Now that is the block which, uh, which is required by the UE to synchronize in downlink. Now in case of NSA the LTE anchor tells the UE where the SSB is and the UE just goes there and finds the SSB. But in case of standalone, there is no LTE anchor. So the UE, it has to find the SSB by itself. Now what it does, how to how it searches for the SSB and how it scans the whole channel, that's, uh, let's understand that first. So in case of 5G standalone, we have certain uh, positions which are given by the 3GPP 38104 specification and they are called GSCN which is the Global Synchronization Channel Raster. Uh, so the SSB in case of 5G standalone can only be located on these uh, imp these frequency carriers or on this raster. So if for instance we have the whole channel let's say this is our frequency band and this is the time domain so the SSB in case of standalone it cannot be here or here or here so you can't really place it anywhere you like. In case of NSA you can put it anywhere you want because the LT anchor will tell the UE where the SSB is but in case of standalone the 3GPP mandates that the SSB should only be on these uh, predefined locations which are given by the GSCN and uh, those are uh, much farther apart. Now why we have this? So that the UE does not have to scan the whole channel. The UE only scans these locations and finds the SSB. So over here the SSB if you remember the structure of SSB we have to, uh, talked about it in the frame structure video already. So the first one is the PSS which is the primary synchronization signal. Then we have the SSS in yellow here which is the secondary synchronization uh, signal and then the green one which uh, sort of uh, encapsulates the SSS is the PBCH which also which is also uh, what we call the MIB, the master information block. Now uh, for the UE to synchronize it first uh, goes and reads the PSS which as, as the name suggests is a primary synchronization signal. So uh, the PSS will give the UE frequency level synchronization and then we have the SSS so with PSS and SSS together, uh, the UE is synchronized in both uh, frequency and time domain. And also these two channels provides the UE the information about the PCI. So the PCI of the cell will be found by the UE by looking at these two channels. Now after this, uh, once this is done, uh, then the UE is supposed to read uh, the PBCH which is the master information block and the MIB, this master information block also called MIB, uh, it carries the information which is given by again by 3GPP 38331. It carries the subframe number and subcarrier offset, subcarrier um, spacing. Uh, but another important thing that it carries is the PDCCH config SIB1. Now the SIB1 is very important and the, and the location of the SIB1 actually is uh, uh, decoded by the UE from the PBCH or the MIB. Now this PDCCH config SIB1 actually gives the location of core set 0 which gives the location of SIB1 but for the sake of simplicity let's understand that after decoding the PBCH the UE gets the location of the SIB1. Now why is SIB1 important? SIB1 is important because it carries all the other access parameters that the UE requires uh, to attach to the cell. For instance, SIB1 it carries 
the QRX level min. So, for, uh, so if the UE decodes say 1 and it finds out that the RX level min is let's say minus 110, so it will know whether this cell is a valid uh, cell based on the cell selection procedure. Now, uh, where does the UE get the RSRP from? As I, defy, as I explained before in the RSRP session as well, the RSRP comes from this yellow channel, which is the SSS. So once the UE has decoded SIV1, it gets the QRS level min, and then it checks it against the RSRP for this cell to verify that the RSRP is above the QRS level min. If it is above the QRS level min, that means this cell passes the cell selection criteria and the UE can try to attach on this cell. If the RSRP is less than the QRX level min, the UE will not try to attach to this cell, right? It will look for another candidate. Now, another thing CIV1 has, CIV1 also gives the PRAJ configuration. Now, we know we know that uh, in case of NSA, the RAJ configuration is given to the UE by the LTE anchor. But here, in case of standalone, there is no LTE anchor. So, we need another mechanism to get all the RAJ configuration so that the UE can initiate the RAJ process. And once we get the SIV1 over here, so we get the RAJ process. From the RAJ process, we have the root sequence index. We use this and the zero correlation zone config, which gives the cyclic uh, shift. Using these two, the UE can generate a RAJ preamble. And again, this uh, I have another session on this uh, for RAJ uh, configuration and how the RAJ configuration is used uh, to initiate the random access and you can see the link over here on the top so you can refer to that so using this one uh, the ue then gets the ratch configuration and once the ue has the ratch configuration then the ue can initiate random access and after random access the ue can get rrc connection setup and the wrap setup so this is the overall cell search process we will have another video about the whole call flow for 5g standalone from random access to rrc to the wrap setup but the cell search is simply over here. UE looks for the GSCN raster to find the SSB. Once the UE gets the SSB, UE looks into PBCH to find the SIV1. Once the UE gets the SIV1, it looks at QRX level min to verify that the cell is above the RSRP threshold given by QRX level min. And if it is above the threshold, then it uh, again reads the SIV1 to find the RAJ configuration and with the RAJ configuration it can initiate random access and then set up the RRC and the radio bearers and, and the RAB and the PDU session. So that is the um, short summary, a quick summary about the 5G standalone cell search and network entry steps. I hope you like it. Uh, do share with others. Stay tuned for the next one. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.